Welcome back to It's Your Law. My guest, Ed Fallone, is a candidate for the Wisconsin Supreme Court. He's running against an incumbent, uh, which is uh, no small job. He's got a lot of support. People are interested. They think that he's going to be an improvement on the Supreme Court. But tell the folks a little bit about the Supreme Court, its makeup, and how people get elected to it. Certainly. Um, well, we have seven justices on our state Supreme Court and they are elected uh, officials, and they are elected to 10-year terms. And so this coming election on April 2nd is vitally important because uh, I certainly believe that with the dysfunction we've seen on the court, including the physical altercation between the justices, including the disciplinary proceedings that were brought against one of the sitting justices that fell apart, and now these disciplinary proceedings are in limbo, and there's a real possibility there will never be accountability. Um, this election, April 2nd, if, if Justice Rogensack is reelected, uh, I have no confidence that any of this will change. She has referred to these uh, problems, these serious problems, as mere gossip. She has claimed that the justices get along fine. And I think that if we want to get the court working again, this is going to be our chance to do that April 2nd. We need new blood and people who will approach that responsibility with the same respect it has had for many, many years until it kind of fell apart recently, don't we? Oh, absolutely. I think so. And I think that changing just one person can make a big difference on the court. You know, a multi-member court like our Supreme Court um, is, a, is a, a court of personalities, and changing one person alters the mix. As a new member of the court, none of the other members will have any grudge against me. Um, they're not going to try and get even with me for a past slight. They have no reason to doubt my motives. And so I'll be able, hopefully, to break through this distrust and build some consensus and demonstrate that I am willing to compromise and that I will not allow uh, my uh, job-related disagreements to turn into personal disputes. And I don't think you bring an agenda to the court, which I think is so very important. Absolutely. And as a law professor, I tell my students, I don't believe in big ideas in the law. I don't have any overarching theory that I think explains the result in any case. Uh, because if I did, then I would probably consciously or subconsciously try to fit each case that came before me into my pet theory. And I think that's wrong. I think the parties in a legal dispute deserve a judge who will listen with an open mind to both sides and follow the law to whatever conclusion it leads without trying uh, to advance any sort of an agenda or ideology. The Supreme Court in Wisconsin is the last stop, isn't it? The trial courts on the local level, like our circuit court uh, here in Oshkosh, branches one through six, uh, they're kind of fact-finding courts for the most part. And then we've got the Court of Appeals, which is a, maybe an error-repairing uh, court. Mm -hmm. But the big, important cases go to the Supreme Court, but not all of them. It has to be a special case to get there. Can you explain that? Well, the court has to uh, grant the uh, appeal to decide to hear the case, and it's going to reach out and select cases where it feels there are significant legal issues or very significant mistakes below that need correcting. And this is why I think that my experience will give me a, an added perspective that will help the court. Um, I bring 25 years of experience representing businesses and investors, a, a background in corporate law that I do not believe is, is currently on the court. Uh, I bring uh, experience on access to justice issues, working to practically create uh, programs that provide legal representation on an affordable basis to working families, something that our state Supreme Court could focus on and help advance, uh, and constitutional law. As a law professor of 20 years, an expert and scholar in constitutional law, uh, I think all of these things will make me an important addition to the court and, and help in the uh, law-making function of the court uh, as it uh, works from appeals from the appellate level and the trial level. Well, you've touched on two things that I think are important. 
One, of course, is the academic background. We really are short on academic people mm -hmm. on the court, and it is scholarship. It's dealing with precedent. It's dealing with confusion. It's offering clarity when the cases are in conflict. But you've dealt with something else that I think is so important in our country and in our state. I'm not worried about whether a wealthy corporation is going to get the best lawyer and get justice. I'm worried about the trust issue of ordinary people and our community, our population is changing. We have many people from many different ethnic backgrounds that we didn't have a few years ago. And they wonder if they can get a fair shake. They, many of them don't have money. Some of them don't have access uh, to as good an education as they're going to have in 15 years. Mm -hmm. That those people feel that they can be heard and get a fair shake against big money and big corporation is so very important. And that's been a big part of your career, hasn't it? It has, absolutely. Uh, I've been very committed to the issue of access to justice. Uh, if you talk to our circuit court judges, they'll tell you a big problem is the number of people who appear before them without lawyers. We call that pro se. And it slows down the process because they don't understand the system. And they get a, a lower level of quality of justice because they don't have a lawyer representing them. And so I've worked with organizations as the president of one group called Centro Legal that provides affordable lawyers to working families so they don't have to go it alone. And uh, as, as one of the steering committee for a similar group that works with immigrants, people who have a legal right to be here, but because they can't afford a lawyer are at risk of being deported. So absolutely, we need to find ways to uh, get legal representation to working families so that they are not forced to go it alone when they have legal problems. The United States Supreme Court has decided that corporations our citizens in terms of piling money and buying elections. But they haven't gone so far as to say that corporations can vote. And that's why it's so important that people recognize the importance of their vote. What is the date? April 2nd. April 2nd. And vote for a people person who is going to be there for all of us. Thank you very much and good luck. My pleasure, George. Thank yeah. you. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen.